theory in a way. This is coming from our practices as teachers. And I myself, I'm a teacher and a teacher trainer. So let me start off my presentation today immediately without any fuss. And I hope that you will be able to see the entire presentation. Uh, can you? Yes, Sanju. Yes. yes, you can see that? All right, yes. fine. So I'm starting with the first slide, which uh, you might wonder, why is it called Ekul Tara and what is this co-creative uh, experiential learning? Uh, this Ekul Tara is actually named after my daughter Tara. My husband is French, and both of us founded the school together. And I want to set my personal context because it gives us the reason why we want to do experiential learning across the schools in India. You see, our daughter Tara, we lost her in 2014. And Tara was a very, very happy child and a very evolved soul. And I think as educators and parents who went through the extreme grief of having lost, uh, probably having the most difficult exam in your life, and still being able to stand up. The reason was that she at least had a very happy childhood in our school. And that's the message I want to carry forward in all the work that I continue to do. That is that we don't know what our personal stories, what is the reason why we are here, how much time we have on this planet. But whatever we do, we must give a happy childhood to all our children. And each child is for me, Tara, and I think should be for everyone. We are also calling it co-creative experiential learning. This is uh, something that is important because experiential learning is not, it can be an individual experience. But when it is collaborative and when it's creative, it takes us to another level altogether. And uh, Ecole de Tara is not a school. Ecole is a French word, uh, but it's a movement and it's a philosophy. So when you're talking about experiential learning, like I said, when we did this course for Diksha, uh, for CBSE on the Diksha platform, that time, the NEP was only a draft, but today it's a reality, the NEP 2020. And as you all know, experiential learning is now very much part of the policy document. It's part of the mandate for all teachers, for all schools in this country. So I'm assuming that everybody has done the course already. And uh, that course was meant to sensitize teachers to experiential learning. It wasn't meant to be a full-fledged training. And therefore, we understood the need for carrying this forward because teachers have many questions. Uh, as you know, of course, this is a, there are many features of this particular training. You've already all done it. It's intensive. Uh, it can be more than four hours. And they're very good, high quality classroom videos that we've included because we wanted to show the actual uh, dynamics of what happens in a classroom situation. Uh, you already know that it is in collaboration with Tata and TIS and Mahatma Gandhi International School. And the pedagogy that we uh, created is known as GRL, Generated Resources Learning. Now, today's workshop, is actually about project mapping. Why are we doing project mapping? Because if you're talking about interdisciplinary projects to be done in classrooms, teachers must know how are they going to be able to do it. And one of the main issues that I saw as a teacher trainer across, uh, not only in this country, but I've given a lot of trainings across the world. And I realized that actually teachers are always beginning with content. And that's why we need to get out of the content. Content is the last thing. The topic syllabus is the last thing that should come in in your uh, uh, framework or when you're actually planning. So I'd like you to, first of all, invite you to do a small starter activity in the, the, on, the, on the course, the experiential learning course that we have created. You know that there is always a small starter. So I'd like you all to close your eyes just for a minute, OK? Just bear, just follow what I'm saying. Just close your eyes and take a deep breath. And, and with that breath, you release, you exhale, you release all the tensions, all the worries that must be there following you from all your daily and professional and personal lives. And take another deep breath. And again, exhale and find a comfortable position where your body is relaxed, your palms are on your thighs, your hands and legs are not crossed, but they're straight in a comfortable bent position. And you take a third deep breath, eyes still closed and exhale. And with that exhalation, you find all your worries going away. 
and you begin to feel grounded and centered. And now imagine very briefly that you've got a wonderful beverage in your hand. It may be a cup of coffee, a tea, it may be hot or cold, it may be a fruit juice, it may be anything, but it's your favorite beverage. And you've got it in your hand and feel how does it feel in your palms? Is it hot? Is it cold? Can you feel the cup? So take your hands closed, close it around in an imaginary way around your cup. It's your favorite cup maybe. And feel the temperature. Bring it close to your nose. Inhale the aroma. Can you smell the aroma of your favorite beverage? And as this aroma goes into your body, feel it relaxing every cell, every pore of your body. And you exhale. And now you're going to take a little sip. And as you sip your favorite beverage, mm, feel the taste in your mouth. And as you feel the taste, allow this taste to open up your taste buds and enjoy it and feel the taste, the smell and the feeling of coolness or warmth as it goes down your throat and relaxes you completely. And now you can put down your imaginary cup, relax and open your eyes slowly and welcome back to our project mapping on how to make a good cup of tea. As you know, this experiential learning model has been proposed to you. Uh, if you cannot see the presentation, uh, just let me know, please. We can't see the presentation. You cannot no, see? see? All right. All right. That's what I was thinking. So let me just... Um... Someone was in... Yes, we are not able to see now. Okay. I'll just try to again resume. Yes. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes, ma'am. No. Now it's okay. 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 No, no. Yes. yes. Right now. Okay, so uh, the experiential learning model, as you can see, is already there on your course, which is there on the Diksha platform. And you can see that it begins with prior notions. You get feedback on prior notions. What is expressing notion is basically uh, allowing children to express their preconceived uh, notions or prior learning or prejudices, biases, these are all different things that come out because children always have an idea about certain things. And then you have that acts as a feedback. You have exploration and research, again with a small reflection when they present. You have the creation aspect with again a feedback. And then you have reflecting on your learning experiences with a feedback and exchange. We will go through these in the project mapping. Now, first of all, the thing is, the question is, what is a project? And this is a very important uh, uh, understanding the difference between a topic and a project. Very quickly, I'm just first going to start off by showing you what kind of projects can be done, which are simple to do. Uh, firstly, uh, projects must have a purpose and they must be connected with real life. So here you can see children are actually running the cafeteria for a day, making a very simple dish. It might be lemonade, it might be a salad, it might be a little dish. And in uh, doing that, they actually begin by first tracking their own uh, eating habits. So you can see on your left hand corner, the photograph on the chart paper, they're actually tracking their own eating habits. And from there they go on to deciding on recipes, they taste, they conduct surveys. On the top middle photo, the square one, you see kids are outside making purchases. On the right hand side, you can see that uh, they are actually, we are actually making the food in the cafeteria and then of course they're serving it. So it becomes an interdisciplinary project. Similarly, there are other projects like filmmaking, uh, very easy to do in today's world, where children make films on social issues of their choice, a short film, maybe one minute or two minutes. But in the making of the film, you have script writing, you have uh, uh, lights, you know, technology, physics through lights, sound, editing, 
uh, you have language, you have social sciences, and then you have all the critical thinking when they're making the choices to even edit the film. So there are different stages. I cannot go into details right now, but this is just a glimpse. But let me look at another project. Let's say waste management project. Now here kids are actually tracking how much of waste are they generating. So they are looking at, they're bringing, uh, let us say over a period of one week or three days or whatever you might want, the packaging that they've used when they've consumed things from maybe uh, toothpaste to foods or whatever. We generally do, uh, use food because it's very directly relevant to the child. And they bring all those packaging to the school and they begin to sort it, uh, categorizing it, looking at what is biodegradable, what is not, uh, what are the different materials which are there. So you can see that. And they even weigh it to look at what is the weight of actually uh, the, you know, the garbage that they are uh, actually creating. And similarly, when they're consuming things, they're also looking at the packaging to see what are the ingredients that are going inside it. What's the weight? What's the MRP? Uh, what are the additives inside? Preservatives used? Is it genetically modified or not? Is it organic or not? What does it mean for my health? So they're analyzing all of that. And you can go from simple to complex, looking at the child's age group, of course. And here you can see children have identified, classified the stuff that they've used uh, from imported to local. What's the dif difference between that? What does it mean for economy? So you can have, uh, you can continue to go deeper at other levels. Similarly, in the chart papers there on the soft board, you can see the children have actually analyzed what's the difference between their needs and their wants. Can we separate that? Uh, is it really important for my sustain, sustenance or is it just a desire that I have and how am I being manipulated by advertisements? How are these ads actually playing upon my insecurities or desires to encourage me to buy certain products? And from there, they are going on to also creating awareness com campaigns to uh, help others understand about the fact that, you know, when you're using just uh, you buy one particular item, just be conscious of how much of packaging is around there and how much are you wasting. So these are just, uh, you know, awareness uh, things which can be integrated. And you can integrate a lot of subject areas. Of course, uh, when we're looking at that, there is a lot of science, there's mathematics, classification. Uh, you can look at the size of things and materials. There's language, uh, or, you know, the advertisements will integrate that. And you have also the costings, your mathematics, you know, what's the cost of all the things I'm consuming. You have uh, Venn diagrams, bar charts that can come up. And here you've also integrated, obviously, visual arts and graphic design with environmental studies. You can see the child has made the life cycle of a Diet Coke and they've created the uh, poster campaigns. And there are many other aspects of this when children even work with rag pickers to understand what is the nature of the uh, waste which is being generated. Now, this kind of a project can easily be done right now under lockdown period also when the children are at home. Now, obviously, when you're doing this, the first thing very important for a project is that you must know how to do the mapping. Where do you locate the learning? But this is just a, a, a glimpse of a mapping, but we'll do it in details uh, just now. Uh, but what I want to draw your attention to is look at the way all the words are in present continuous and they're in the verb form. So you're learning, you're researching, you're calculating, you're identifying, you're taking feedback, you're making prototypes, uh, you're running a campaign, you're collecting materials, you're understanding and identifying. So it's very important that teachers must use this kind of terminology, which gives us out of a purpose and makes it active rather than just an abstract thing to be learned. Now, what's the difference between an activity and a project? Uh, both are important in our uh, learning, of course, but an activity would be more instantaneous. It's based on direct instructions, whereas a project would be long term with different stages. And like you've seen, there would be an action plan. There are different objectives there are outcomes. And these processes are mapped and children therefore have opportunities to learn. Uh, to take another example, role plays and activity. So let's say that if you're doing uh, making of uh, a cup of tea, uh, or you're doing waste management, we could just do a small role play and saying, I would like children to show the life cycle of a particular object or how are you using this particular item? Just do a little role play. But this role play then can be used to check prior learning or, uh, you know, to get feedback about what do they really know about this uh, topic or project they're going to do. It can also be part of a formative assessment. But that's uh, so role play is short role plays an activity. But preparing a play for an awareness campaign or for a social project, because then you're mapping it in terms of content, because there are dialogues, there are costumes, there's lighting, there are budgets, there's seating, 
uh, all of these things that they're creating posters. There's a role distribution and responsibilities that are charted out in the collaborative learning. And that's when you're going to include the competencies from different disciplines, which will organically and naturally go around that project. So you're not starting with the content, you're actually starting with the project. And then you're mapping that project in terms of the learning, which can happen, and the competencies. To take another example, let's say um, a topic can be, what is electricity? Now, that's an abstract topic. But uh, a project would be um, trying to understand how making a proposal to reduce electricity wastage at home or at school. And in order to do that, there are many actions. The children would be conducting surveys. They will collaborate. They'll make a plan. They'll come up with a design solution. They might create awareness campaigns. They may create posters, all of this. And they may also write a report after their research. And that becomes, that can even be a kind of a summative assessment. Or what is healthy diet? That's an abstract topic. But making a dish is then a project. So because then, you, like we said, you can go into the costing, planning, uh, making a prototype, serving, getting feedback from others. So all that cycle becomes a full project. So now let's go to the uh, actual project mapping on how to make a good cup of tea. And you might say, why a good cup of tea? Well, I'll, I've put some quotes that I found on the internet. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson says, some people will tell you there's a great deal of poetry and fine sentiment in a test of tea. So maybe tea can be poetic. Uh, where there's tea, there's hope. So there is another uh, you know, sentiment associated with that. Somebody says, uh, we are like tea. We don't know our own strength until we are in hot water. So it can be a metaphor. Tea can be a metaphor. And sometimes all you need is a good cup of tea. So it can just be a reason. It can just be reassuring us. Uh, and sustaining us. So there may be many reasons, but let's just look at this very simple thing, which is making a good cup of tea. And what are the different steps that would be necessary to map it as a project? So let's say this is a project that we are going to be doing with our children. It may be under the lockdown period. It may be in the school situation. It doesn't matter. Look at the title of the project. We're calling it making a good cup of tea. So it's already action. Uh, it's not uh, abstract. It's not how to, because a how to could just give you procedural steps without actually making a good cup of tea. So here there is a definite outcome, which is the product itself, which is a cup of tea. Now, the first step we said would be the initial representations. Uh, there is a lot of debate on whether to call it prior learning or not, because some academicians feel that uh, it may be misleading. The children are here to learn. Uh, there's a debate around it. So let's say that these are preconceived notions. Children have notions about certain things. So can we ask children to actually express those notions? Now, how are they going to express that part of your mapping? You might decide that let's run a little quiz. What do they know about it? Let's do a role play. Let them do a mime or a game. Now, one of the most important things in your mapping is first for you as a teacher to know why are we doing this? For what reason? What's the purpose? Is it good for health? Is it going to help them in some way? And this particular thing you must also do with the children in the class. That means you're also going to allow children to understand, come up with ideas. Why do they want to do this particular project? Is it really relevant to their lives? Are they interested in it? And if not, then if the majority don't want to do it, I would suggest then we vote and come up with new projects which are linked to children's own lives. But generally, it should work. So this is important, the first step, which is initial representations and defining the purpose. And finding ways to uh, asking, uh, allowing them the ability to express their uh, preconceived notions. The second part we can say might be research. Now the kids say, all right, we want to know, we want to make a cup of tea, but how do we go about it? The first thing would be to maybe uh, conduct surveys. Who all drink tea? What kind of tea people drink? What is available in the market? That's for the teachers to decide. But there are many ways that they can do these things, from field trips to experts, internet, books. Uh, so they're actually uh, getting real data. So uh, coming back, making connections now with the course content that we have created for the experiential learning on Diksha, you've done the airplane uh, module or the project. Remember when children are asked to represent any flying object, that was the first step that we did. That was the initial representation. So children are sitting in a circle, and each child acts out, mimes out a flying object. That was the initial representation. 
Now here when we're doing research, you can see if you recall in the course, children went out into their libraries, they asked teachers, they asked what is an airplane, what does what, what does it mean to fly? Hmm? Uh, what is it in mythology? What is it in science? What is it in history? But the first, they were just getting the real data. So you can see here that <clears throat> why are we talking about real data? And this is where there's a difference between the textbook and the collection of real data. Real data means something to the children. It is being generated by the children. It is so therefore they will be able to use this data in meaningful ways. Uh, they may be doing questions, they may be running interviews, that's where your language competencies will come in, how to create a good questionnaire, how to approach people, close questions, open-ended open questions, uh, you know, collecting qualitative data, quantitative data, again, age-appropriate ways. Uh, you would also have, of course, internet, when they're doing research, they're meeting experts. All this data that is generated by the kids is very important because that will be what is going to be used to uh, 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 further the learning. The other part of research may be related to health. What is What does tea do to us, for example? So here I might look into biology and nutrition. Is it good for health? Too much of tea might be bad for health. Uh, you know, too much of boiling tea is not good for health. What are the kind of types of tea in the market? Now, in this kind of, uh, when you're researching, you would be touching upon uh, different subject areas like history, the history of tea, uh, where is it grown, or uh, there's uh, geography. Uh, what is a pH of the, you know, what is a reaction between different things, water or uh, the tea leaves and different kind of tea leaves uh, react differently to different kinds of water. The boiling point of the water must be different. The economics of tea from the Assam tea workers, two other kinds of economic models, um, uh, types of tea, loose tea and tea bags, whatever. And of course, a great amount of culture and folk tales which are related to tea coming from China, Japan, India, etc. So there's a lot of scope to include that. Let's say the third step would be then the plan of action. Now, this is the time when the children need to plan all the different steps. So you need to plan it, but then the children, you would also help children plan later in the class. This is a this mapping is not only for you as teachers, you will do it later on with kids. But right now we're looking at how you're going to do it. So this would mean what does the making of tea? Uh, what is the costing? What does it mean to make the tea? And there's a cost factor, and that's where your mathematics will come in, in terms of proportions, measures, ratios, what are the kind of utensils we are using. Uh, in the utensils, you might want to do simple machines. What are the ingredients? And with the ingredients, you want to make the particular dish. It may be tea, it may be something else. It may be a model of the airplane. So there's a feedback. So if you remember, uh, you know, uh, in the airplane model, they did the research, and then they presented the research, took the feedback, and then they also then, of course, made their particular little planes and they gave each other feedback on uh, what they made. So uh, plan of action is important. And of course, the idea of space and time. Now, if I'm going to be doing something like the aeroplane activity, I need to have open space if it is available. Or uh, do I need to have a cafeteria space? Or uh, where are the children going to do it? Now, under lockdown period, you might want to plan whether they, go, they have space, they, ha they are able to do it, do they have adults to help them, how can they do it, etc. Of course, this is the time that a lot of language and science competencies would come in uh, very organically uh, into this particular, uh, on, in, in these steps. The fourth part would be the action, when they're actually going to be making the particular tea. Uh, and... Uh, there, again, they might want to collect feedback from their consumers, whoever is drinking tea, again, doing a survey, getting the feedback. And this is a time a lot of life skills are involved because management, time skills, this critical thinking, this creativity. Uh, they might be advertising for the tea. They have to think on the spot to improvise, etc. And the fifth last step would be the reflection. Now, reflection is included in all the different stages, but there's a main reflection at the end of the uh, whole project or activity or modules. So here you can see that uh, there may be written an oral uh, reflection and there's a discussion and exchange about that reflection. That's a very important part because if they, when they discuss, they begin to realize that I've learned much more than I thought I had. Uh, generally, children will say, oh, ha, it was fun, bad mazaya, it was great. And then, you know, they'll write down one or two things. But when they begin to actually deep, go deeper and exchange, then they are able to themselves list, make a list of things that they are they've learned. And that's when your analytical abilities and critical thinking comes in. So you can see that there are lots of uh, different subjects which are covered. You have 
languages, biology, history, geography, economics, maths. I mean, these are all different subject areas which will come in. And with each subject area will come the competencies. Now, that's the time the collaborative learning of teachers is very important. So when you're mapping this project together, a maths teacher will say, oh, I can do this particular competency with this age group at this point. Maths me me ye ye kara sakta hu ya kara sakti hu. Your a language teacher was saying, oh, this is very easy for me to do all interrogation, you know, questions, uh, grammatical uh, syntax, uh, etc. Or a maths teacher might say, I can make them do pie, uh, pie charts and diagrams here. A chemistry teacher might say something. So they are the, the subject experts are coming in to map the competencies, but that's the last layer. So you can see there are different layers of making the project. First are the steps with the processes. Then you're putting all the processes, and then at the end, you're putting the subject areas, and behind the subject areas, you're putting in the competencies, which has been contributed by all the different teachers. Now, let's see how learning outcomes can be integrated. So based on this project, I went on to the website of uh, MHRD, now, of course, MOE, and I thought, let's see what are the different competencies that can be covered. And what do you know? This list is by no means exhaustive. But across the grades, you can actually do very different competencies. So a grade four would be simple. For example, you know, center in English, uh, just linking words. First, we do this. Next, we do this. You know, you have adjectives, good or hot, you know, uh, bad or whatever it may be, sweet and sour, whatever. Uh, so reading subtitles. And similarly, uh, in grade five, you have short interviews of people, interviewing teachers, grandparents, etc., attempting to write creatively. That's where you might be making posters for tea or uh, you know, writing a small uh, article on it. Uh, you're expressing it verbally and uh, so on and so forth. I won't read all the competencies, but just glance over it and you will see that there are many. Grade eight, uh, you can see asking questions in different contexts and situations. Uh, participating in different events such as role play, skit drama. So kids may be actually doing a skit on it. They might be doing a write up. They might be making uh, narratives or uh, you know looking at uh, experience. They might be doing a little skit. So let's say uh, over a cup of tea, they're having a hypothetical interview with uh, uh, with a company person who uh, runs a particular uh, company of tea. It might be somebody selling Vag Bakri Chai from Gujarat. Uh, so that might be economics and business management at a higher uh, age group. Or it might be a historical figure who uh, you, know, you might want to interview over a cup of tea or who might be linked to tea. We will look at that later. Similarly, mathematics, you have grade six. Uh, you know, uh, the different ratios in different situations. The shape of the teacups and pots, you might want to look at sphere, cube, cylinder, cones from surrounding. So they're getting these different kinds of cups and looking at what is there. Uh, and all of this can be, they might be looking at what's the expenditure of the family in the last few months uh, on this tea, might be one week or one month, etc. cetera. Uh, higher classes, you have bar charts, pie charts, a concept of profit and loss, uh, calculating that, interpreting those bar charts and you know on the consumption of tea, which is more in winters and uh, summer. I've cut out the word electricity because that's in the original. So I'm putting the competencies which are exactly there from the original learning outcomes as defined by the Ministry of Education. So all we are doing is instead of consumption of electricity, I'm doing in consumption of tea. Uh, similarly, you have environmental sciences, uh, very obvious, of course, again, I didn't identify di different objects, identifying different cooking processes, activities, uh, phenomena, distance, weight, uh, you know, well, I don't know about distance, about the tea that travels, uh, the duration that the time it takes, different processes like evaporation, condensation, again, grade five, recording their observations and experiences in the making of, let's say, the tea, etc. We can uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go into these details, but you can see there are lots of things we can cover. And similarly, in social sciences, where is the tea grown? What's the link interrelationship between climate and people? Uh, and, uh, you know, they can create an advertisement. These are, again, all absolutely the learning objectives which are there. Uh, different kinds of market. And I like the last one on this. Great. Ed. Explain how the English East India uh, Company became the most dominant power. Now, this is from... Uh, the, uh, the competencies. And this is so interesting because this is again linked to T. So these are the different kinds of uh, things that we can do competencies. Now coming back to the mapping, this is the mapping which was done by us, by, by teachers, uh, when we were making the paper plane. And just a quick glance before we head towards the ending of today's uh, session, uh, you can see there's a starter there on the top right. 
and you can see that there's an activity, there's an initial representation starter activity, activity one, whole class and subgroups, mime an object that flies and reaches the other person. So this is linked to what you saw on the particular uh, course that you've done. Similarly, the other activities bring objects that it can fly. So they have brought in different objects from their own environment. Here you can ask children to bring different tea bags from the environment or anything else, you know, if they are, uh, if they are uh, making um, any dish or they are, uh, you know, any project that they're doing. Let's say they want, you want them to write, uh, create a newspaper. So you might say bring any written document or bring different kinds of newspapers to the classroom and let's classify the different kinds of newspapers based on their texture, material, format. So every time you're starting from the child, the child's context, the child is bringing the things. This is not show and tell by the teacher. The teacher is not bringing and showing and telling the child. You're just asking the children, go out, search for it, bring it in. That becomes our resource to examine, analyze, categorize, etc. So it's direct link to the child's environment. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can quickly glance. Uh, there's a research component, history of flying, the analysis, the processes. That is how we had done the mapping of uh, making a paper plane. Now, that concludes my session of the mapping part. I hope uh, many of these things are clear. If they're not, maybe we can, we'll be able to take a couple of questions at the end. We would like now you to proceed to do a group assignment, to now do this practically. So the first thing you're going to do in your groups, uh, which your, the, the hub leaders are going to decide, uh, your own groups of six or eight uh, uh, hub leaders, teachers, would be to decide on a project and a grade level. So decide on your own project, which is linked. And it can be something you're already doing in your school. I often tell teachers, and you know, schools are doing environment uh, drives, they're doing campaigns, they're doing annual functions, they're doing field trips or a picnic. Now that's extracurricular. From extracurricular today, it has become co-curricular. I'm saying go one step further, make that the curriculum. Amount of learning a field trip can offer, it's a great opportunity to learn. Or uh, let's say your um, the annual function or making an eco-friendly bag which so many teachers are doing in their schools. So doing rather than double the things, you're teaching something in your classroom and then you're doing the fun part outside the class. Make that fun activity your main activity or your project and then map it. So decide on a project and then what grade level you want to touch. It must contain an active verb, it must have an outcome uh, that it may be a play they're doing, it may be a model, it might be a small bag that they're making, a dish or a campaign they're, uh, they're creating or a design solution. The more practical it is, the more fun it will be for kids. Map the processes of learning, prior notions, how are you going to do that, the purpose of this, the research experimentation, the actual action, the different stages and the reflection and feedback. And remember in the course content that you saw on Diksha, the teachers, Meenu and Ravinder, asked the class, what did we learn? How did we learn it? And why did we learn it? And there's an individual reflection and then that is shared with each other. So this is a very important process. What did we learn? Ask the children to write that down. How did we learn it? And why did we learn it? You draw that and you can post it on the blog spot. And this is the blog spot link, uh, which is attached uh, in the chat box. So that will be explained uh, after this again. And once you've done that, you go back onto it and give feedback to at least one another group. And we've given you the rubrics of just basic things. Uh, and you can title your submission as name of your region, name of the CEO, the hub code, the name of the hub leader. So this identifies you a little bit, places you so that we know where is that mapping coming from. The peer feedback, what are you going to give feedback on to the other group on the mapping that they've done? The project is relevant to the child's context. It has a purpose. It has a defined outcome in terms of what the children are making and doing and creating. Uh, their different processes and stages are well mapped and the learning outcomes in different subjects are included. These are just very basic uh, points that you can look at and you can post your uh, particular mapping. And of course, why do we need this blog spot? Because we want to create a community of practice. The idea today is that everything is flexible. The NEP 2020 has given us the autonomy to do things our way. The CBSC has very clearly said you don't have to stick to your textbooks. Copy, just acknowledge our work as part of intellectual honesty. And uh, this, the, the methodology that we did, you know, that we created, you can see the logo was GRL. It's because the GRL, we called it generated resources learning. Because when people ask us, are you Montessori? Are you this? Are you Krishnamurti? What it is? 
uh, yes, the PPT, uh, we will try to uh, uh, find and then we will be able to uh, create the actual movement that because uh, NEP now empowers us. So let us take that space and final word on it. My, my, my entire um, argument is to actually decolonize our curriculum. And when we are doing all of this, remember uh, Krishna Murthy, critical thinking, Gandhi, uh, hands on experience, practical. Uh, Tagore, all the aesthetics and ethics that goes with it, and uh, Sri Aurobindo, all the spiritual component that goes with it. If we keep this framework, the framework of these four great educators in mind through these processes, we would have really, really done a great, great service to our children. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and um, we are open to questions and other comments. Yeah. Just before we go on to the questions, this is Anusha from uh, Tata Institute of Social Sciences. What we will do is, um, as some of you have been asking, that you want to uh, look at <clears throat> the uh, screenings. We hope, actually, that you will also generate equally valuable resources as what Anju has just shared, and that you will be able to tell us more about what kinds of documents you have. So this is the blogspot, cbscwebinar.blogspot.com. And here you will see that there are workshops on experiential learning. And if you click on the read more and you go into the page as such, you will be able to now see that we have already shared a demonstration. The workshop organizer from CBSC has already shared it. And there is a link. Now, Google primarily does not allow for the link to uh, to to be displayed as a URL, but if you click on it, you will be able to copy it and paste it uh, in one of the other slides. And, and just so, for instance, if I copy it and I go and open another tab and paste and click, I should be able to see what we have shared. What we are hoping to have from you is, of course, you can continue replying to us, and we are happy to have those discussions. But we would like you, as you have uh, so ably pointed out to us, that you will also be interested to come up with your own project plan, as Anju ended. And I have just typed in here maybe your name, the link to the plan, if you have. It can even be done on a paper, and you could transfer it along with your team members who may be you know, collaboratively doing it on paper. And then you take a picture and upload it on the drive, because no attachments are allowed. And you could just tell us which are the grade levels that you are allowing it to be at, and the team members' names. Um, so just a point as, as such, when you are looking at the uh, you know, sharing something, please ensure that whatever it is you're sharing, even if it's a picture or if it is a slideshow, as in the case that what Anju has done, you would try and ensure that it is on the share uh, drive. I do hope people are typing in their questions because we do want more questions to be answered. And uh, you can uh, ensure that it is on the um, screen to be as a public, you know, anyone with link can view and then copy that. So for instance, if I click on it, uh, sorry, if I right click on it, I will be able to uh, look through and uh, share with people. I'm sorry, my net is slightly slow, I think. So you can click on the share and you could, when you click on it, you will be able to see Just a minute. And so you will be able to see the link, and you will be able to change, just ensure that when you're sharing it, that you make it to be shared with anyone and uh, work on that before you publish, right? And then uh, you could focus on these elements. So uh, wait for the standards, and then just see how that works through. So this is how it would be. And of course, if anything, you can delete your comment. And if you feel that this is not, you're not satisfied, you can delete it and you can work on from there. So uh, um, I hope that helps you. Yeah, so here in terms of restricted, please just change the restricted to, um, you know, 
change to anyone with link now can view it. So now your, uh, you know, the drive has kind of changed to the public and anyone with link can do it and you can copy that link and click on done. So that would enable it to work, right? I hope that is clear and uh, looking forward to all the questions to answer, sorry. Okay, I'm there's just trying to stop question. presenting. I'm just trying. Yeah, if there's any question, yeah. uh, we have like five to ten minutes. We'll take the questions. And uh, after that, I would like to uh, uh, invite Dr. Saha to share the final words. So mm -hmm. kindly uh, share your questions. Looks like... Uh, the presentation was very detailed and self-explanatory. So yes. yes, it was so detailed and so beautifully being done that uh, we need to try hands it on rather than asking anything. And uh, sorry, I would like to know that how we can share our presentations to you so that you can look into it and check it and let us know that whether this is the way we have to work or we have to do something more into it. It was really awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I just uh, there's a question about the time frame which we have uh, forgotten to mention. That I think the time frame is up to you. It could be up till this Saturday. It gives us time. Uh, it gives you time to prepare your projects. Put it on the blog spot so everybody you know you can give each other feedback and then we can also see it and we will take up a couple of mappings ran randomly for comment in the next session next week at the same time. So that Thank is a time you. that we'll be able to give each other, you know, just give an overall comment on the kind of mappings that have happened. I know some of you are already doing this in your schools, uh, but the point is right now to do the mapping so that the competencies do come in organically and that becomes important as a, as a uh, I don't know, as a document for all other schools as well. So uh, even if you're doing activities like that, just do the mapping as an exercise, as an intellectual exercise, and then that can be shared on the blog spot and with other schools. And this collaborative one is very exciting. When you are collaborating as four, five, six, eight teachers, the ideas that start coming is fantastic. And that's the beauty of it. So we're looking forward to that. I think Saturday is a good uh, time. That gives us time, a couple of days for us to go through it. And by Tuesday, we are also ready with our comments. Anju, ma'am, second session as usual, uh, and for the fourth time. And uh, my children, they did uh, one workshop, uh, one project on growing micro crops at home during uh, lockdown. And we have already done the uh, mind mapping, concept mapping. So I'll share that. But on sure, this sure. Uh, this kind of project but didn't know how to actually professionally document them that part we were lacking a lot of projects are happening but we don't know like uh, i learned from you uh, self assessment peer assessment parent assessment that part i'm incorporating for the first time and anything we are doing so uh, on mental health also we have done we have come up with a, a one e magazine so their parents, teachers, children, everybody, uh, they have collaborated and they have come up with e-magazine. But now I'm putting it to review, self-assessment, peer and parent assessment and mind mapping. That Great. part I have. So ma'am, what you're saying about the mind mapping is important. Uh, I think uh, the more we do it, <laughs> the more it becomes uh, a good tool to use and you know it, it clarifies things for us. So I think as an exercise, if all teachers can be encouraged to do it, then it becomes a very, very productive and useful uh, exercise because that's how we can implement in the classroom. Yes. And then the kids, the kids should be doing the mapping at the end of it, you know, and that's what we do in our school. The kids learn to map their own projects along with us, but we should have and mapped it first. Very, very helpful mind mapping, especially for special need children. I have many. So the child who was not able to uh, copy one uh, letter from the uh, board now is drawing mind mapping beautifully and revising the whole chapter through concept mapping only. So it's really useful. Yes, absolutely. So we are looking forward now to um, all this work coming up on the blog spot and we want to create the community of practice and exchange so that schools begin to exchange with each other interesting projects that they're doing. Thank you very much, Anju, ma'am, from my side too. 
uh, I would also like to second what Sudha ma'am uh, just said that we we are also full of uh, such projects in the school through our global citizenship, which is a self curated uh, curriculum for uh, K twelve students. But at the same time, you have given a complete direction uh, to the projects what we are doing in the school, and this will certainly uh, will add more value to. Uh, the initiatives we have under project based learning thank you so very great. much anjuna it's a great session thank you <laughs> thank you i just want to recall to you all that gandhi ji was against textbooks by the way and he always did projects with the kids too so you know um, uh, he he said that textbooks were a kind of an, an enslavement of children so you know today when we are going to be walking away from uh, the enslavement of textbooks we must learn how to map the learning inside the projects that's very very important otherwise there'll be questions on how are you tracking the learning uh, the learning outcome so that is the uh, importance of this exercise thank you for sharing thanks again ma'am thank you very much I'll just uh, good afternoon, the... ma'am. Uh, if I may, I'm Mrs. Pallavi Sharma, principal of Mamta Modern School, Vikaspuri, New Delhi. Anju, ma'am, it's always been a pleasure hearing you. Uh, even at the NEP uh, conclave, I was uh, really impressed with the way you presented toys. And today, the way you have uh, actually, I agree with Sudha, ma'am. The way we can document. uh the project learning was indeed wonderful thank you so much uh, thank you, know, you a lot has been learned today thank you so much thank you yeah uh, uh everyone if i just make comment just want to run the checklist uh so through cbsc we have shared a, a pre course survey and a post course survey uh so once you've finished the course on diksha platform you're supposed to also fill the post course survey so uh that is a very important thing uh, do let us know if you do not have access to it second thing um because the numbers are large and also like anusha and dr anju has mentioned uh we want this to be a really collaborative activity so to activate your own hubs of learning bring in all the five or seven schools which are there in your hub of learning collaboratively create this project map and then submit so it is not an individual activity it is a collaborative activity the way we want our children to do it in the real sense so and we also reply i forgot to say that but yeah yes. <laughs> yeah and uh, please post your uh, assignments by saturday end of the day with the name of your uh, uh, the code of your hub the name of the coe plus the you know in the assignment itself you can write the member schools who have participated thank you so much and the teachers should have completed the uh, training on diksha of course that is very very essential uh, whoever yes. is doing that mapping yeah right uh, is dr saha uh, with us in this meeting dr saha are you there in the meeting he was uh, hopping from one meeting to the other so he said i'll join in the end Doctor Sah, are you there? No, Anju, I don't think he's here at the moment. I can't okay. find him. <laughs> okay, so Ramaji, then uh, you can conclude the session. Um, and I think you have done it wonderfully yourself. <laughs> so, so the conclusion has to come from our hub leaders when they submit their projects. Uh, in collaboration with their members member schools and teachers and that is when i think will be the uh, you know it's it will not be the conclusion it will be the starting of their journey into experiential learning thank you so much you all for your time and the passion with which uh, you have not only created the experiential learning uh, course but also the way you wanted to Uh, be carried forward uh, it's wonderful and thank you so much thank you thank you rama ma'am thank you all see you all next thank week you, thank you see thank you all you, next week uh. okay ma'am eagerly waiting for your next advice thank you thank you ma'am thank you for enriching us thank you